Dr. David Harrison, and I'm here to talk about my latest book, The York Grand Lodge. Now, the York Grand Lodge, or the Grand Lodge of All England, held at York, as it was known, was first declared in 1726 by Dr. Francis Drake, who was giving a speech at the Merchant Adventurers Hall in York. But, however, the history of the lodge, or the Grand Lodge, goes back further and um, it's recorded as the old York Lodge having minutes from 1712 and it can even go back further because there's a list of presidents as they were known before it was a Grand Lodge going back to 1705 and most of these presidents uh, were quite uh, prominent local gentlemen and they would obviously have been attracted to an already established uh, lodge or society in the area, so it's been it's been looked at and, and wrote about that the lodge or the Grand Lodge has traces roots that go back even further, perhaps into the 1600s. By the time we get to 1726, the Grand Lodge of All England held at York has been declared, and it's rivaled with the modern Grand Lodge or the premier Grand Lodge in London, which was. Uh, started in 1717 and this rivalry, rivalry builds up and um, seems to uh, carry on throughout the 18th century with the uh, entwined with the history of the York Man Lodge. Now by the time we get to the 1730s um, the York Grand Lodge seems to be uh, fading away and there's one last mention of it in 1744 in relation to a Royal Arch meeting. And this is one of the earliest known mentions of the Royal Arch. And um, this obviously kind of adds to the mystique of the York Grand Lodge, really. It was revived in 1761 by Dr. Francis Drake again, and he led uh, a number of original members in response to a modern lodge that was founded within the city walls of York and it wasn't long before these modern Freemasons became entwined with the York Grand Lodge and became members. The second phase of the York Grand Lodge was perhaps the, um, the most well recorded and we have uh, a lot of prominent members again that become Grand Masters and we have um, a recording of five degrees being taken place by the 1770s. The first three degrees are our current craft degrees, and the entered apprentice, fellow craft and master mason, and then the Royal Arch was recorded as a fourth degree, and the Knights Templar was recorded as a fifth degree. So they were practicing these five degrees. So they were quite progressive, and they'd moved on a lot from the early 18th century, when they appeared to only be using two degrees, that of uh, entered apprentice and fellow craft. There's records in the early 18th century of them opening lodges in places like Scarborough and in Bradford and they're, they're admitting many local gentlemen um, all, all in one day. So it appears that these, these two degrees were performed alongside each other. So they are quite progressive and forward thinking and as the 18th century progressed the York Grand Lodge uh, was going from strength to strength. In its second phase, from 1761, it was uh, founding a lot of lodges throughout Yorkshire and even founded a lodge in uh, Lancashire, which was over the Pennines, over the ancient border, county border. And it seems to have carried on up until the 1790s, the mid 1790s. Um, the last ever mini entry of the York Grand Lodge was in 1792. But some of the, the lodges, in particular the, the lodge in Lancashire, which was called the Lodge of Fortitude, uh, which met in Oldham, near Oldham, um, that seems to have continued up until at least the opening years of the 19th century. There's also a lodge uh, that met in Rotherham uh, called the Druidical Lodge, and this also met um, into the 1790s as well. They also founded um, a Knights Templar en encampment in Manchester, um, which by 1795 had um, 
concluded that the, the Ark Grand Lodge was basically fading away and they switched allegiance um, to the, uh, the Grand Lodge that was run by uh, Thomas Dunkley. And that particular Knights Templar um, Perceptor, as it's now called, is still going to this day. Um, so the Ark Grand Lodge basically faded away um, in the opening years of the uh, 19th century. Uh, until recently, a new York Grand Lodge, or Grand Lodge of All England held at York, was founded in 2006, and this is still going as well. So um, it's, it's had three phases, really, and it's a very interesting um, look at independent Freemasonry, because they consider themselves independent from, from London, they were rivals with the Grand Lodge in London, the premier modern Grand Lodge in London. And they also practiced their own degree system. They had their own administration. And they inspired um, the, uh, the York Rite, which continues today in America. And that's very popular. Um, and the name continues with this new, new York Grand Lodge, which is still going today. So, it's a very important part of Freemasonry and um, founded on the Edwin legend, the Prince Edwin legend, um, which dates back to the medieval period. And there's a lot of history there in relation to early Freemasonry with the building of the Minster, um, very early um, Minster accounts as well that refer to medieval Masons. So there's a lot of history there in regards to the development of early Freemasonry and independent Freemasonry.